Hello, and welcome to the Nostalgia Podcast. A podcast where we discuss the retelling or continuation of pop culture favorites as seen through a queer and feminist lens. My name is Eric Lefebri. And my name is Jessica Tercero. And this week, we are joined by the one and only perfect producer. Well. And showrunner. And editor. And editor. And I don't know. Are you all those titles? Second guest. <laughs> I don't know if I'm all of those titles. <laughs> you are. Okay, no. You're a showrunner for Quest Friends. That's true. Yeah. I, just not this iconically, show. Iconically. Yes. Not this yes. show. The, the but showrunner. You of are a producer, editor, showrunner, and host. You wear a lot of hats. I do have several hats, which is nice because I'm I have sensitive skin and I get sunburned very easily. So Exactly. Yeah. So that that voice you're hearing is the voice of Danny Barkley. Hello. Welcome to the podcast that you will be editing because you edit all of the episodes. Yeah, I get to hear my own voice again, which is still just, you never really get used to it. Uh, <laughs> you really don't. I, I mean, I break, feel like but... I have because I'm obsessed with myself, but. Well, no. you're very cool is the difference, so. <laughs> Narcissism, as it were. <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Uh, we're this doing, week... we're, this week we're doing. Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Hell yeah. Yeah. So we decided to do uh, Power Rangers, the 1995, question mark? Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie from 1995. Yeah. Uh, Power Rangers, the movie, and then the reboot, Rita Repulsa's Revenge, 2017 uh, film. And this was suggested by one of our listeners, Thomas Meehan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, thank you so much. We have uh, been wanting to do this. Uh, Danny specifically has, uh, as soon as we started the pod, he's like, if you guys ever do Power Rangers, mm -hmm. I want to do this. That is a true so, statement. So um, you are <laughs> literally making dreams come true here. So thank you so much for uh, the suggestion. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> you, uh, this is like an early Christmas present for Danny. Yeah, all I need. and what what a whirlwind, Danny! Had you seen the remake before? I had. I saw it in theaters opening week because I was oh, okay. stoked out of my mind. Okay. I was a a major Power Rangers kid, '90s kid. '90s babies will understand, you know. Um, <laughs> I had the the toys, the t shirts, the all the merch. I got bullied for it a little bit because once you hit a certain age, Power Rangers wasn't cool anymore. When but, did um, you like step out of your Power Rangers phase? I feel like if you're going to say that, we we need to know. I think it was fourth or fifth grade, mid to late 90s. It was after oh, the movie fine. for sure. It was after that's the movie. That's 100% fine. Yeah. It wasn't like 10 months ago or anything like that. But, I mean, maybe. <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> so when I, yeah, when, I heard they were, when I heard they were rebooting it, I was I was stoked. And then I went and saw it. And it, it sure is a movie. We'll say that. It's, <laughs> it, it sure is a all film. the qualifications of a feature film. Yeah, technically I... it does have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and that's that's legally binding. You can't take that away. It's a little bit of a fucking lengthy <laughs> quest. <laughs> I mean, we did need to have as many shots of the Krispy Kreme as possible. So. Oh my oh god, boy. the Krispy Kreme oh is the best part. I'm so <laughs> excited to talk about Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, oh my god, what was what was your experience with Power Rangers? Eric? Oh, mine. Yeah. Okay. Probably I had, I think, an Underu Power Ranger set at one point. <gasps> Cute. Um, but, oh, yeah. and, and maybe like one of the toys, like one of the swords or like one of the handheld weapons. But to be fully honest, I wasn't even a big Power Rangers fan. Like, not that I didn't like it, but I was, I was, I just was like, oh yeah, Power Rangers for sure. And then we got a couple stuff. <laughs> I was like, Power Rangers are cool. But I really didn't know anything about the show. I barely watched the show. I just thought they looked cool. And that toy that I got was pretty sick. So that's really my history. It's near nothing. I... <laughs> you, hadn't, you hadn't seen the remake before? Oh, oh, sorry. And then I did see the remake with Eric um, several years ago. Not in theaters. But we were just like, oh, let's watch it. It looks kind of cool. Um, I was not thinking about watching it when I watched it. And I felt very differently about it than actually watching watching it and paying attention. And then I was like, oh... JK LOL. Same is what here. Same vibes. Right? Similar, right? similar okay, vibes. Cool. Yeah. It's so, very easy to just let into your brain if you're not paying attention. And then suddenly you're like, wait, what did they say? Wait, what is that about? And then it's a mess. Mm -hmm. So I'm the only one that hadn't seen the remake, it sounds like. So mm. what a wild ride that was. Because so growing up, I was the biggest Power Rangers stan. I had all of the toys i had like the decals on the wall next to my bed billy was my boy i was in love with billy like billy was like my dude and 
uh, he's the blue ranger, the nerdy blue. one. Okay, like, the gay yeah. one. Yeah, uh, yep. that's okay, my cool. curse. Like every every <laughs> every guy. <laughs> Lance Aren't you also, Bass. Yeah, Lance. All I was of these. Say. Yeah, a hundred percent. But yeah, so I I fucking love them. They were super great. And then I also grew out of it. I I think like when they did like the. I don't know, Danny, do you remember this when, like, there was the big reveal of, like, the Green Ranger going to, like, the White Ranger reveal, right? Uh-huh. So my mom, like, we were on the freeway, like, and I fucking told her, I said, like, I remember this, this is, like, an, a memory that is fucking burned into my brain where the reveal was going to be that fucking night, and I told my mom, I have to be in front of the TV at this time tonight <laughs> because it was like the two parter and like you know like and it was number two so it was like fucking there it was like mom i have to i have to have to and we're in traffic you know in socal on like the 405 or something and she's like sweetie we're not getting anywhere. i was like what do you mean and i like i freaked out because like it was honestly super like it was very traumatizing for me as a young as a young girl um i was very upset what a what a what moment a, what a, what what a devas- moment that was what a devastating moment that would be i mean you, i yeah. guess like that shows yeah, me you. that i've always <laughs> just been like such a big fangirl and loved like tv and all this like yeah. so much but like damn like the the um, the frustration and disappointment that i felt in that moment um i cannot put into words so, absolute and total loss i'm sure Similarly to the way that Ivan Ooze devastates the city of Angel Angel City. Angel Grove. Oh my god, are you doing Angel a segue? Grove. Angel Grove. Let's just jump in. Do you guys want to uh, morph on over to the first? Should we morph on yeah, over? Let's let's shimmy shimmy on down. In Angel Grove, a group of superhuman teenagers are extreme sportsing and just palling around while a group of construction workers nearby uncover a strange, otherworldly artifact that turns out to be a holding cell for the galaxy's most dangerous villain, Ivan Ooze. The Power Rangers arrive at the scene and battle Ivan's Oozy goons while Mr. Ooze sneaks off to the command center to finish off Zordon, the one who imprisoned him 6,000 years ago. The Power Rangers lose their ability to transform into Power Rangers and rush back to the command center, but are devastated to find it in shambles and Zordon on his deathbed. In a last-ditch effort to save Zordon and the world, Alpha uses the remaining power to send the Power Rangers to the planet Phaedos to retrieve the ultimate power and stop Ivan Ooze once and for all. Back on Earth, Ivan devises a plan to use Angel Grove's parents as slave labor to free his ectomorphicons so he can continue his quest for total domination. The Power Rangers' biggest stan overhears Ivan's plan and organizes the kids to try to save their parents. Back on Phaedos, the Power Rangers meet Dulcia, Phaedos' resident hot lady, who saves their lives, and gives them animal spirits to guide them on their path to reach the power they're looking for, aka the Ninjetti. The Power Rangers acquire the power after a few fight scenes and head back to Earth where Ooze's ectomorphicons are ready to fight. Big Robot battle happens, Ivan fuses with Big Robot, Power Rangers beat Ivanbot, Zordon is alive, and the universe is safe once again. So here we are. We've arrived. Danny, what are your thoughts on Dulcia? Uh, you mean a woman who had a big effect on me when I was a 10-year-old child watching this movie? Ex- exactly. Yes. Yeah, ab- tell about- us about your tell us about your awakening. So that was it basically. It, it's <laughs> Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, cool. Thank you for listening. Yeah. We love our love our fans. I, mean, I don't want to give too realize- much detail of what a 10-year-old boy does. But, you know, I didn't realize so, like how like high cut like I mean she was not wearing anything under that up. like damn and he, you get some hard like pelvic bone mm-hmm. oh, from yeah. under thigh moments that that sex V yeah 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 called, I mean I she she has a full Brazilian like I and mean so, there's and here here's the thing with that at its core I love people just letting themselves be hot and sexy like I love the embrace of sexuality. I love nudity. I love power, owning one's power sexually on board. This is a classic case of male gaze, obviously. 100%. Um, But on top of that, this is a Power Rangers movie. I'm not trying to be like, this is a kid show, but like, hey, y'all, 
she's like has like a titty out and we're getting some full feet in this like you don't need to be doing that like this is power rangers yeah like what um, is this for just the fucking dads like i don't it's for the dads i guess but but even i'm just like uh it's so trash if you're gonna do that equal opportunity make one of the rangers in a full thong and tassels or something just like give, give us me something else. In a thong that's fine G- like give do a it. full v like, like i mean like, kimberly is like has like her full fucking midriff showing the whole time and like these cute little shorts which i'm like was she my first girl crush probably uh yeah. did i even realize it at the time I'm, like i was watching that mo- this movie again and was like oh okay yeah. like Cause, wow because she's so like, cute she's so, so cute. cute but also like her and uh dulcia are both like kind of badasses where like they don't take any shit like they don't give anybody like an ounce of anything i mean dulcia when she's like oh i'm not gonna take you because if i leave then i'm gonna start aging like and i'm not about that <laughs> like she's just like so into herself and i love that but also dulcia could have used a little bit more clothes for a show that is supposed to be marketed it's- to like five-year-olds <laughs> It literally is like, come on. It's like if Barney's best friend was like like the hot construction worker from the village people coming out with like full abs, sweaty and like chaps (laughs) with like half crack showing. It's like, come on, kids. Like, I mean, (laughs) what? This seems so out of place. Like at least the semi-sexual male gazy midriff, like that cute little denim top. Cool. That makes sense in world from a male gazy intended perspective. But this other character seems like straight up out of like an M rated video game. And like arguably the new one is made for, you know, a much older fan base that it's made for. Right. But everybody was more closed in that one than she was in this one, which again Literally. was for children <laughs> it's for like 19 year olds i'm like give us hot leg at least like anybody show us anybody's hot leg come there's on a, there's a weird moment with dulcia too where talking about like oh is it for the dads who is it for when she's assigning their their spirit animals or whatever and you're the bear and you're the wolf and then adam's like i'm a frog Meh. and she's like yeah <laughs> for someone to kiss and turn into a prince and then like kisses him and it's like, okay, yeah, what's happening? What's what's that? What are we doing there? Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, truly, because like, she goes down and she's like, Tommy, you're this because it represents this and this. You're and she, brave like, and you're fierce and blah yeah, blah. Yeah, she only assigns like these things to like, or she assigns the animals and like their corresponding like traits or whatever to everybody. But then Zach is like a. Fu- or, I'm sorry, not Zach. Oh, God, I know. What's his name? Adam. Adam. Adam is like a frog and he's like, what the fuck? And like, he's literally just made fun of so much in this fucking movie. Like, even when like the Zords are like going to like the final battle, you don't hear any of the animal noises like uh, other than the fucking frog because you're supposed to laugh. Like, literally his character is there just just to be bad, just to be laughed at. And it sucks because he's like the one Asian person of the team, right? And then Aisha, who also like they literally just switched like Trini and Zach, like the the token black and the token Asian characters and just switched them, right? Which like, okay, whatever. But Aisha doesn't do anything. She literally gets her ass handed to her all the fucking time and has to be saved by literally everybody else. And I don't think there's a fucking point where she is a like supposedly she's fierce and unstoppable, but she never saves herself and everybody always has to come to her rescue. And she doesn't even like get any fucking lines in this movie. Yeah, there's a weird balance of who gets screen time and who doesn't. It's it's basically Tommy and Kimberly's movie. But um, yeah, yeah. Regarding Aisha and Kimberly, I I made a note every time one of them, the two, you know, girl rangers, had to get saved or called for help, and there was a shit ton. Oh, Uh, yeah. Kimberly gets picked up by the crows, the crow monster boys, and starts screaming for help. Uh, Aisha gets trapped by the bone dinosaur. Kimberly Mm -hmm. gets trapped by the bone dinosaur. Uh, Every time it happens, though, they're like, oh, my God, help, help. And Kimberly specifically yells for Tommy. And one of the last times that happens is when they're fighting those, like, rock guardians that come out of the wall at the temple. She gets trapped, and again, just immediately, without trying to fight, just goes, oh, my God, Tommy! And this motherfucker literally swoops in, 
Tarzan on a vine swoops in to save the day. Like yeah. no matter what he's doing, he's able to stop what stop what he's doing and come save her. But she can't just like just fight it's, back. Which yeah. is also silly because they're the Power Rangers and they're showing us physically that they are badass fighters. Like in some opening scenes, like we see them effortlessly kick the shit out of these bad guys. Like no sweat off their teeth. Like they're just going. And then suddenly, fearless, uh, suddenly a right? bone dinosaur shows up and they're like, oh no, bones, I can't get up. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? What are you talking about? And then even at the temple, she's pushing the rock and she's doing a good job. The rock's about to fall. And suddenly she's like, oh, my arms, this rock. And like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? You're yeah. doing it. Just push the fucking rock. You're strong. We don't deny that you're a strong person. We've seen you backflip, spin kick, break neck, fight. We know you can do this. But suddenly, oh, my arms are weak now. Come save. And you're like, this is dumb. I hate the, the, cause it's not even just like, it's not even like justifiable damseling. Not that there is any justifiable damseling, but it doesn't even make sense. Cause it's they like can't su- do that stuff. Suddenly I'm weak. No, you're strong. Yeah. You've told us you're strong. You've showed us you're strong. That's your character. You're strong. And also, why are no. you scared? <laughs> and yeah. why like, are you scared? You literally scared? had Ugh. 30 fucking minutes of extreme <laughs> sports in the beginning literally. of this movie to yep. show us how fearless and like awesome and like cool they are. You so, literally, like, literally skydived the... out of a fucking plane in the opening scene and suddenly it's like, no, bones. <laughs> like What? Skydived <laughs> and set the Angel City record for most perfect landing six in a row respect queen which <laughs> like, is the thing we keep track of apparently and then which suddenly they're like like for oh the high God. school right because they're on the high like well, they're they on sky- the high school skydiving team they skydived the they skydive so good that they refinance the observatory <laughs> that's what happens in the beginning of the movie oh my lord yeah so yeah i just all of those moments danny 100 percent, so needlessly silly and reiterating and, the trope of the damsel or the weak femme character, like, yeah. come on. It's, They're the it's Power that, Rangers. Even, They're the Power like, Rangers. Kim, They're strong. Kimberly is, like, at every fucking point, she's, like, the first one to stand up and be like, hey, this isn't cool, right? And she will always, like, speak her mind, say what needs to happen, like, you know, and arguably says and does the right thing, right? But she can't back herself up on any of that. So it's just, like... I don't like you're you're presenting as like this fearless, strong, opinionated, good person who can't do anything for yourself. You need somebody else to fight your battles for you. You like actually can't save yourself. So where is your power? What is it that you're doing? I mean, you're cute. But like, what are you other than that? Like you talk a big game, but she can't back any of that up. And it's they do a weird thing with Kimberly where that she's the only character of the Rangers of the six of them that has any kind of like emotion or development or arc at all where like she's the one that cares about zordon right like she's the most mm-hmm. affected by by zordon she wants to save him otherwise there's basically no character movement in this movie at all so like, yeah they put that focus on her a little bit okay cool but then they also like punch down at her a lot like there's the scene where they they all get in their zords right they form the megazord and they all get in like all systems go ready to rock weapons online and she goes "Ooh, nice stereo yeah. And you go, okay. I made a note of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a girl, so cars go bang vroom. And you're yeah. like, oh, my God. She uh, Doesn't she, like, kick one of them in the nuts, too? That's like, uh, uh, Aisha does that. Okay. It's, it's, the, it's the emergency never touch this button button, and it's oh, button yeah, that yeah, knees yeah. him in the crotch. Yeah. Um, I mean, when, always go for it if, always. You, if you have to. If like, have what to. the fuck are we even? Exactly. Like, oh, yeah, uh-huh. fuck him up. Uh, when Kimberly flies into the final battle on the pterodactyl, uh, Ivan, Ivan News goes, oh, look, here comes the little cute pink ranger to the rescue. And then fucking Goldar goes, oh, you think she's cute too? Fucking Goldar has the hots for Goldar her. Is and horny. he's like, Goldar's a mess. And then at the last, uh, one of the last scenes of the movie when they're in space, which sure, why not? Billy goes, oh, I have an idea of how to get rid of Ivan. Let's use the comet. And Tommy immediately goes, oh yeah, awesome idea. I already know what you're doing. Let's do it. And Kimberly goes, Huh? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Like, it's come on, it's, guys. It's just a poorly written, misogynistic male view of like, oh my god, she's dumb and hot. But it's she's the but, the but, girl, yeah. She's the girl, so she's obviously not smart. Which is, I mean, a boring and dumb and bad and a bad take. But secondly, I think it's just not good writing. I mean, obviously it's not good writing, but just from the perspective of they're the Power Rangers. 
They're literally the, like the defenders of the world. Every single one of these people is not only capable, but exemplary, both in strength, cunning, skill, action, leadership. Like they are the ones, right? So mm-hmm. suddenly, like, it just seems foolish. Like they're the fucking well, Power Rangers. Make some and- other plebe or some citizen be the butt of the joke. Like that makes or just sense because have- they're not the Power Rangers. Or just have any of the other rangers be like, huh, what do you mean? Like, have, have Rocky do it. Who, who fucking gives a shit who about cares? Rocky? Just make have Rocky the gay, be dumb. Make the gay one do it. Come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> and well, he's the smart do that. one. He is the oh, smart, yeah. smart one. Which... But, like, that that kind of furthers my point of, <clears throat> like, um, you know, and I know I continue to say this on the podcast, but especially in the 90s, we got this version of feminism, which is, or, like, you know, like, faux girl power, which is um, yeah. your power is in how you look. And your willingness to, like, stand up and say something. So she's very sassy. She's very willing to, like, talk to somebody or show her emotions and just, like, make sure that everybody knows that she's there and in the room, both, like, physically and with her voice. And she, like, and emotionally, too. She, like, projects, like, everybody. You never wonder what Kimberly's thinking because it's fucking out there, right? And that's portrayed (laughs) as kind of a strength. But, like... Then when it comes down to anything, like, again, like, there, there's nothing there. She isn't able to, like, be there and defend herself. And she's always trivialized, like you were saying, Danny, where it's like, oh, it's the cute pink one. Oh, it's this. Like, she can't even be taken seriously by the bad guys, much less by by anybody, you know? So what is she even doing there? Like, and and that's something that I always really, really hate is, and even today, like, that that trope is still um is still alive and well where it's girl like boss. Oh, girl boss girl boss to the sun like that is so pervasive that a lot of people still believe that that is feminism and that that is a strong woman and that that is a strong character because she speaks her mind she's cute and she's part of this team but they don't look at how she's treated and what she actually does in the team and what her role is oh, in yeah. that it does feel like it's the bare minimum of inclusion like look we put a girl on the team but then we don't think yes. about what we do to her or say about her Dulcia or we even, put like... an asian man on the team right we put a, a black girl on the team we put a nerd on the team yeah but then we don't think about yeah. how we represent them and what they say and what they do and how they're perceived by others it's yeah. it's classic it's classic tokenization mm-hmm. like well, they show they... up just to be visible and that's it and they further that too with um bull and scully uh i'm sorry um, bull and skull Bulk and Skull, sorry. Um, with Bulk and Skull, they further <laughs> that um, because, like, that's just fat phobic and and queer phobic. Like, their yeah. whole character is just this big ass fucking joke where, like, he's literally hiding a fucking pizza box in his jacket. Why? And yeah. then, like, at the end, especially, like, I mean, I was getting those vibes, like, queer phobic vibes from them this whole time. But then, especially at the end, when like everybody's hugging and they go to hug, no, 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 we have to, we have to high five. Can't hug, we bro. Have to, can't yeah. hug, bro. Yeah. Can't yeah. do that, you know. And it's, which I mean, low key, they were dating though, for real. No, like, they were. I mean, are. if they're not, I have that if in they're my not notes. dating, they, if they're not dating, they're in love with each other. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. they're queer. You know, they're queer. Canon. Like, doth protest too much with the don't touch me, but it's mm-hmm. like they've. They for sure kissed and they were they're in love with each other. <laughs> like it's it's not not even a question. Gay rights. They said they said Bulk gay and marriage skull now. say gay rights. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Ivan Ooze is gonna be the officiant though, too. Cause he okay. low key is. Can we talk very about Ivan Ooze? Coded. Let's talk about Ivan Ooze. I would love to talk about this Ivan motherfucker Ooze. is the best character in this movie, and it's not even fucking close. He's Nutty. very good. He, he is, is the best the character f- in he's... a lot of movies, like comparatively. He really like... is. He is so charismatic and silly and perfectly semi queer coded. Where it's like yep. there's a little bit of airy fluidity that he like is constantly about. There's a silly playfulness. There's a constant gaslighting and misdirection. And like, I mean, hey, stop what you're doing and go jump off that cliff. And they're like, oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> let's go parents it is the coolest silliest uh villain he's so sick his vibes are immaculate this fucking his scene vibes are immaculate where he's already uh he's hypnotized the parents they're all doing construction and they're all working picking at rocks and we cut to him and he's sitting there with a goddamn cocktail with a long straw and he's like i'm so bored like come on yes and, and it's a fucking like martini you're like yeah oh, okay. it's like smoking i think like oh yes. amazing 
And like so one of his first things that he says, like he's just like, oh my God, the things I've missed, the Black Plague, come on. Like he's he's so over the top it's, and so great. It's perfect cartoon behavior. It's perfect cartoon behavior. And that's why to me, I'm just like, obviously it's the acting, 100%. But like the characters are there. Like that, he gets the, the, he gets the assignment. Oh yeah. He understands what this movie is. And he's playing to the strength of the movie. Like, he gets it. Whereas these other characters are written like, what? Like, they, I just, uh, they seem so, f- the the concept of, like, performative comedy or the idea that it is the Power Rangers is so foreign to them. Or at least all the all of them are written that way. I feel like they probably had a lot more dialogue, but then they decided to um, take it out. So that way they can have as many... You have to yeah. talk Noises. with your hands and your uh, arms at all times. Even even when they weren't in the suits, right? They're like there's like a faraway shot of them like, you know, with the flashlights underground, like looking oh for God. shit, right? And like them, like whenever they moved an arm, it was just like whoosh, 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 yeah. whoosh. Mm-hmm. And I swear, like it's just as loud as when it's supposed to be like right in your face. And I'm like, <laughs> they're not even in costume. Like they're they're not like this is not a thing. What are we doing? And from then on, I could not stop, like, listen. And that was, like, the fucking beginning of the movie. I could not stop listening to the sound design for this movie. It is comical. It is it's so, so... It was gold. And, and that's the thing is, like, that's the whole point of the show. It's, like, it is silly. Like, the fighting is so over the top and arguably bad. But that's why it's fun. It's It's cool. And that's the whole point of it. And it's just, like know what you're making like it it seems like part of this movie knows what it is and the other part is like uh love story maybe maybe well, uh, sort of like, not wait, really no. i feel like yeah, and, they uh, did like, all of the on. character development on ivan Ooze because he's the only new character in this yeah. entire movie where like That's i mean true. presumably like as a fan of the show like you know as a child at this time right you have seen all of the seasons leading up to mm-hmm. this right so mm-hmm. you already have that character work from each and every one of them so you don't necessarily i guess uh, th- this is what i'm thinking i feel like they didn't think that they needed any sort of character development in this they were really going to try to work on ivan Ooze and then oh my god look you see zordon like that's that's a fucking big deal right like yeah. he's not just a floating head but like the way that they developed ivan like like exactly what you said like uh very queer coded also just like the way that he just fucking trivializes literally everything uh, as soon as he shows up fucking rita is in a snow globe how iconic and i want to talk about so rita fun. in a second yeah but he also like watching it this time i didn't realize how the power rangers and zordon were just fighting like these colonial wars like and i was like oh shit that's wild yeah Where, like ivan who's calls him out for literally using children to like fight his battles for him and i was like oh that's interesting because yeah like they literally came here and they were like trying to use Earth as a command center for a never ending war against evil, which is like, OK. And then they're going to get five teenagers, five of the youngest people on this planet to fight for them. That's their whole fucking deal. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, this is a this is a thing that I never picked up on as a child. Of yeah. course, I didn't. But not to not to be a little too read into it, but it's a little mormon Unforge. Um, just in terms of an a never ending holy war uh at the behest and exclusively given to children to then go on missionary trips to go preach the gospel at the ripe old age of sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Uh big Mormon vibes. Yeah, and I think like I hadn't thought about that. I think that's a great point, Jess. Uh I mean, even without that, with that now, especially, but even without that, I, I watched the movie going like, hell yeah, Ivan, get him. Like, I want Ivan to win. Ivan kicks <laughs> yeah. ass. Like, Ivan fucking rules. Yeah. Like, yeah, destroy the culture, destroy society. Like, Burn it all deserve, down, motherfucker. We deserve something new. And we deserve it in a martini glass with a joke. And Ivan <laughs> is bringing both. Who tells the, the parents when he wants them to kill themselves, he says, I'm sick of your ugly faces and your dull personalities. Go away from me, basically. Which... Like, Oh my god! And then that little narc is like, "Oh my god!" And he like goes to break up like the kid party, and is like, "Our parents are gonna die." And they're like, <laughs> like "So?" <and> like, <laughs> <laughs> L- literally, I'm like, 
I love that. Like, yes, this is the gayest character in the world. And I'm obsessed. And also, yeah, let him, I mean, whatever, death and all that. But like, let him go. <laughs> We're partying. <laughs> We're yeah. like I'm drinking also, the ooze. We love slime. We're sliming hard. Slime us up. Also, it was just, uh, I'm obsessed with what adults write for like what a kid party looks yeah. like, what they can do. Like, yeah. I mean, like blank check and all this other shit, like what mm-hmm. they think children do or will do when they are unsupervised and have unlimited resources is incredible. But also... I love that the parents like just fucking go into the house, see the thing of ooze, and like, oh, what's this? And immediately stick their fucking fingers in it. So I'm like, stupid. That oh dad is God. so dumb. Oh my that, God. That dad is so bad. Also, yeah. I don't remember Tommy and Kimberly being together. Oh, yeah. Um, I did not remember that. I don't know why. But so at the end of the movie, I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> So, so no, you got. Do you want to know why the three new rangers are there? Like canonically, why uh, we have a new red, black, and yellow ranger? Um, yes, I do. Did that happen in the show before the movie, or they, were they replaced? It's canon. It's why they were replaced. It was season two of the show, um, before the movie came out. So they had met these three: Rocky, Adam, and Aisha at a karate tournament, like you do, and. When uh, the original Red, Black, and Yellow Rangers, Jason, Zach, and Trini, were called away to represent Angel Grove at the World Peace Conference in Geneva, Switzerland, is what happened on the show. They had to uh, replace them as the Rangers to stay behind and guard Angel Grove, so they chose their three friends. Sorry. Yup. What the fuck? Isn't the reason that those actors left because they were getting paid shit? And they told them essentially, like, you can't pay us this little. And so then they like walked off and protested, like, that's fine. We'll get other people. We don't need you and we don't need actors. Potentially. And so then they uh, got essentially non actors. And I don't think it was until fairly recently that they're even paid these actors uh union wages. I think technically they've been non union for oh, decades. Oh really? I didn't I didn't know that. Um I know that's they, what they Eric do... was saying. I okay. didn't validate this, so please take that with I a grain of salt. I, I might be spreading like... lies. <laughs> There's a like toys that made us or shows that made us that yeah. I think Power Rangers is on oh, yeah. that mm-hmm. um, would probably reference something like that. I, it's just a a wild, amazing, fantastical reason to to get them off the show. Like unbelievable. So, I mean, real life, they all just fucking walked away because fuck this. Like, like well, a lot Eric, of them came I, back though. I, like, I think like so. Jason, Jason, the original Red Ranger came back for like seven of the eleven series. Like he kept That's coming right. back over and over again. So they, okay. some of them came back. So it wasn't like a complete fuck you forever. But um, yeah, maybe it was just. It like is very in possible. The moment. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's very possible. Um, Possibly. I do want to dip into the cultural appropriation conversation. Ooh, uh, which is I feel like a big part of Power Rangers, just in terms of like its origins. I know that it was like initially a japanese show correct and they essentially pulled the footage uh, is it saban or Sabin? well there's a whole how i built this that i listened to uh, a podcast from npr where they talk to the the man that brought power rangers over from japan yeah um it's been like years since i listened to it so my details are a little bit foggy we'll link it in the show notes but um he talks about how he saw power rangers as like this is going to hit like this needs to be in America. I'm going to do this. Yeah. It's okay, like the wait, same hold on. I think the guy, on. I think the guy went, was selling pencils door to door. He yeah. like was like, Oh no, we're going like, I'm going to do this. And he fucking put everything he had into this and got rejected for, I want to say almost a decade before uh, they finally were like, okay, fine, whatever. We'll, we'll do this. And then they, he licensed the the show essentially. Yes. Under Saban or, or Saban again, I don't know how to pronounce his name. And then was just dubbing everything and just cutting together willy nilly episodes essentially, dubbing them in English to make some sort of story and presenting that on top of like B roll shot of actual actors who were then supposedly the ones in the suits. Yes. Yeah, it's based right? on a show called uh, Super Sentai. So Super all Sentai. all That's the right. fighting and all the costumes and all the monsters, anytime you don't see the kids' faces, is just literally cut from that another and pasted sh- it. It's, it's another not show. It's not even reshot. <laughs> yeah. It's just another yeah. show. Yeah. So 
they have to like write the the English version episodes around like, well, what do we have footage of? I don't know. We have like a big alligator monster. Okay, we'll write a story about an alligator monster, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. So they just add in the clips of the kids in Angel Grove, but otherwise it's all just ripped from another show. My Mm -hmm. goodness. Yeah. So I know that historically it does, it's like most of it, at least in the early seasons, was not even American footage. It was a completely different TV show, but it does lead into the question of, appropriative culture for a western audience in this movie specifically the conversation of and presentation of like ninja or sort of like Mm -hmm. like conglomerative asian fighting and the spirit animal conversation Mm -hmm. so combining sort of the erasure of uh, asian and east asian identities and also appropriating native uh culture it feels like a very bizarre and messy mashup and also, like, a white person is bestowing these these animal spirits to these Power Rangers, right? Yeah. And then the costume change, too, was also, yeah. um, I mean, gross. Like, and then Ninjetti, like, why why is it, like, why? And, like, later on, I know they go to, like, Samurai and Ninja. And, like, you know, they, they kind of, like, lean harder into that appropriativeness like you're talking about so it's like it's also a conversation because this is technically a show that originated in japanese culture like where what what are you doing like where's the where's the line what are you like i don't even know how to unpack that because it is um, it's so much it's so much and it's so ignored it seems like such an ignorant it's the most western complete erasure and unacceptable ignorance to any other culture of just like well this looks cool like this middle eastern look is cute i'm gonna pull this here and then also spirit animals here and we're just gonna play with it like it's, and instead it's, of making it <laughs> tying so it back to those cultures right they're tying it to um aliens to aliens yeah literally Literally, I mean, talk a- about the ancient aliens. episode. There you Literally, go. that bullshit of it's like ancient aliens. Ancient aliens. It's ancient aliens. It is D- tying it back to that. The most oh my bullshit. God, that's why I like that show. Ugh. Trash. <laughs> I love yeah. ancient aliens for how silly and bad it is. It's, it's terrible, toxic, and problematic. It's awful, but I love it's it. my perfect hotel room show. Have I told you this? Yes. Whenever I whenever I stay in a hotel, I immediately put it on as background because I think it's so fun. It is kind of a weird amalgamation, though. Of like you said, Eric. I also wrote down the Asian slash uh, indigenous native kind of inspirations here. Yeah. Like, and like leaning hard into like the, the mysticism quote, you know, bigger quotes on, on that. But, but just like you were saying, like the, the tone deafness of we're not even going to tie it into anything. It's just going to be these white people, like mostly white people, not all, but mostly giving this information back and forth and treating it like it's theirs and it belongs to them. Yeah. Like, well, and also like yeah. so many others went to try to get that big, the the big great power before and nobody them. could until the and white kids nobody up. could nobody but these five you know um five american children right five american children who arguably have no idea what the fuck is going on at any point. at all they were sent like, there randomly they're, they're also not ones who take necessarily any initiative largely they're sent by zordon right that's kind of it they're not like all being all powerful knowing and and again they are like capable autonomous characters who are very strong and very I mean Tommy capable. is yeah. autonomous and capable. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Tommy is autonomous and capable. The rest are just sort of there Along and follow his lead. And one is there to be like the child bearer as it were. The, the um, she has she's not a person. She is just hot and dumb. Which honestly, I'm just I'm trying to be the same. Like I just <laughs> want to be I want to be hot and dumb. Like ah, uh, iconic. To to, to to be to wear that and just be like whatever and then be able to fight like uh I, amazing but yeah it doesn't yeah i don't even know what i was saying because i'm hot and dumb <laughs> the, uh, it's working already <laughs> what the, the weird part about it too is that like okay you're on an ancient alien planet with all these like weird skeletons of these creatures we don't recognize like cool let's make it something something wild then like let's have cool new animals but no it's like bear and wolf and frog like oh you mean the animals from earth so it's still earth animals it's still the animals that are from these actual cultures yeah. like you're not yeah. inventing like oh a, a alien cyborg hybrid whatever thing for the movie you're just taking yeah. the bear and the wolf like okay that's lucky that that, yeah. that planet had those exact same animals cool and speaks english awesome yeah how lucky yeah 
we really lucked out. Yeah, good for us. Um, what a silly story. Um, I do want to talk about Rita and just give a shout out to how wonderful her fucking insults are. <sighs> she herself is iconic. What an iconic look. What a bad She's bitch. so cool. She's Re- so Rita cool. Rita Repulsa has always been the fucking coolest and the scathiest, like, asshole, but absolutely lovable in every way. She... <laughs> Some of her um, her lines are, you spent 2,000 years looking for a tub of snot. I'm sorry. It, she says it much more sassy. Um, oh, yeah. And but then, she does it with that, like, growly voice. Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then she calls him uh, an egg-sucking purple pinhead, slime-infested jelly donut. Bitch, you, like, I mean, Rita. Literally. Rita is come, it. <laughs> she's really, she's knocking it out of the park every step. And I was really bummed that she's only really in it, like right at the beginning and then essentially in the snow globe at the end. Those are kind of her only moments to shine. I mean, even for uh, being as great and powerful as she is, she's still also just disempowered and fucking thrown away like oh, yeah. all of the other women in the movie. I do like that she's hot for Ivan right out of the gate. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> boom, he's hot. <laughs> Literally. And it's not even subtext. Oh, it's it's like not even like some other like, ooh, I wish I want to see him in a suit. Mm-hmm. It's straight she's up like, like a fucking fuck. real man. Finally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's like, fuck, he's hot. Well, you know what? <laughs> you're like, oh, <laughs> it's especially funny about that is I was watching the movie and like, oh, it's like Zed and Rita, the way they kind of bicker. Like, oh, like they're written like an old married couple. Ha ha ha. No, those motherfuckers are actually married on the show. <gasps> Canonically, oh. Rita and really? Zed are, are a married couple at that point. Is that yeah, why he cute. says finally someone shut her up when yeah. he's uh, like, I mean, just being an yeah. absolute is, trash monster. It's back to, to those those that trope of like, oh, I can't stand my wife. Right. Like, yeah. In oh season two of the show, they get married. So that's why they're like that. Wow. Wait, is I'm awesome. sorry. Is there it's is there a wedding wild. episode that I can go look up? Oh, my God. I hope so. Uh, the The gross part of it is that they get married because she tricks him. So it's like, oh, he would only marry her even though he's a, you know, a red alien with no face, like, oh, he'd only marry her unless he was tricked. Ha ha ha. But yeah. Wow. It's uh, this, this show, reading about the show more, like, of course I watched it when I was younger, but then like going back, like reading about some of the actual plot points of this show, it's bonkers. It's really, I mean, granted, it makes sense off of its origins by itself. Yeah. Like that it is such a silly and wild show, just given how the show was made and how it continued to be made for years. Like, yeah. it's piecing together. It's like finding an old tape and being like, let's make this a show. <laughs> and suddenly you have to like, okay, what's the narrative? How do we like make what we're seeing a story? Well, because the, the whole thing is like based on, it exists because of capitalism, right? Like, yeah, somebody thought I could sell this and it basically exists to sell toys. Like, even yeah. this even this movie, there's all the, the gadgets they have to call out by name. Like, and activate they're all your brand- super sensor. They're all brand new too, right? Yeah. Like those weren't even yeah. their those weren't even their uh, weapons in the show. Yeah, the, they I introduced a whole new line for sale. I legit laughed out loud when he's like, "Activate your illumination beam of power," and it's a fucking flashlight. It's just a flashlight on her head, yeah. like. And then he's got this visor, and Billy he says the uh, <laughs> what is it the the Stega Stinger, and Kimberly has a pterodactyl thunder whip, and then they get yeah. new costumes and new animals and new zords, and there's a new villain and there's new weapons like. It's just Toy. to sell fucking toys. It's a which, Toys R Us commercial. Which makes it even more wild that the one of the plots of the movie is that Ivan Ooze corrupts kids through capitalism by like, hey, look at this toy. Buy this toy. Don't you want this toy? Get this toy. Get well, this no, toy. No, it's not. It's not buy this toy. It's, it's here, here's this toy this. for free. But like here, here, like you want this. You want this. You need this. And it makes the kids like brainwashed. Uh, the, the little boy, Fred, even says you're being brainwashed. And they're like, fuck you, kid. But like in a movie that is existing to brainwash kids with capitalism, they're doing a story about someone brainwashing kids with capitalism. And I'm like, what are we what are we doing here? But that's the thing is why I think it's interesting is because it is it is similarly with like the insidiousness of the way misogyny perpetuates itself in this movie. What a sentence. It you is agree. a misdirect. It's a complete misdirect where yeah. it's like, see, isn't this bad guy doing bad things because he's so overtly bad? Meanwhile, like it's it's to show like, yeah, we would never do that. Why would we why would we tell on ourselves like that? We don't do this. Yeah. Ivan Ooze does this. We're good. Buy our toys. It's the thing in movies where if you if you acknowledge that you're doing it, it's okay to do it. Like in Jurassic World, they can do yeah. a joke about product placement and then do do product placement out the ass. It's yes. that. It's that. It's literally that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's and it's like the intentional misdirect to make you feel less uh, 
less bad or it like it yeah. makes you not think it, like because you're already thinking about it on the surface yeah you won't think about it any further because you're like well that's the answer i don't have to spend any more time thinking about and it, it lazily gives themselves credit because you get to go oh well see they Ugh. know what they're doing like yeah you can't criticize them because they're aware of it but yeah. um i'm sorry but i have not been paying attention because i just googled uh reader repulsa and lord zed wedding and <laughs> it is not just a one episode it's a three-part episode oh shit where rita goes and uh tricks him into marrying her to try to get control of the moon palace again because he like mm-hmm. takes he takes control and like disempowers her He's her so like her yeah. tricking him into marrying her is like for her to go back and get more power. And so it's a three-part episode. Some of these photos are great. And then there's <laughs> also a bunch of people that took the toys and, like, recreated or, like, did their own, like, fanfic with it where, like, uh, <laughs> Zed is dipping Rita. Oh, my God. Oh my I'm God. obsessed. Now, I'm, I'm now so I need to know obsessed. if anyone has done that in real life. You know, people do, like, oh, well, my real wedding's going to be the Twilight wedding or my wedding's going to be the fucking whatever Game of Thrones wedding. You think anyone's ever had a, a Power Rangers wedding? Hey, Danny. Oh, probably. Are you ever? I mean, if it happens again, I mean, do it. Power if I Rangers fi- wedding. That's how I'll know, right? Everyone, I'll, I'll ask, like, hey, do you want to do a Power Rangers wedding? And if they say yes, that's how I know. That's the one. Oh, my God. This picture is gorgeous. You guys absolutely, absolutely need to. Um, well, everyone go Google, Google this immediately. Please. Should we move on? Yeah, I think we did it. I think we got there. Yeah, I'm good. She's so distracted. I'm, I know. I, I closed it. Okay. I closed the tab. <laughs> when the dinosaurs still roamed the Earth, a battle was being waged between the alien Power Rangers and Rita Repulsa. The fight didn't go well, so Zordon, the Red Ranger, ordered an asteroid to come down and wipe them all out on a site that would later become Angel Grove. Flash forward a few millennia to the present-day Angel City, where five angsty teens are being independently angsty, when coincidence finds them all together at the gold mine where they each find a strange otherworldly coin. They try to outrun a train while fleeing from the mine security. However, they're hit by the train, and the movie ends. Psych! They wake up in their beds a few days later, totally fine, except they are now superhumans. After more teen angst and an extreme game of follow the leader, they stumble into a hidden spaceship where they learn about their new powers and some intergalactic backstory about Rita Repulsa, aka the Green Ranger, trying to take over the world. The teens can't turn into the Power Rangers just yet and decide to train at the spaceship, while Rita Repulsa tries to rebuild her strength and amass a large amount of gold after being fished out of the sea. The teens have no luck turning into Power Rangers and blame themselves for being angsty and keeping secrets from each other, only to learn Zordon was also keeping secrets. It's a big mess that literally takes one of them dying and coming back to life to resolve. Now bonded through the trauma of losing, not losing, their friend, the Power Rangers fully emerge, ready to kick some Rita and Goldar ass at the local Krispy Kreme donut shop. Okay, so canonically, this <laughs> is my favorite product placement of any film of all time. I cannot, and I I cannot <laughs> be more earnest in saying that I think the Krispy Kreme subplot is one of the funniest, coolest, most interesting things a movie has ever done (laughs) in not only its lack of complete subtlety in a product placement in an advertisement within a film but the way that the the lead villain languishes a Krispy Kreme donut with full (laughs) close up and eat it's it is near impossible to believe I would not believe that this is true and yet here it is and I think it's the coolest and silliest (laughs) piece of culture this movie is a whole garbage trash can fire dumpster throw it away all the Krispy Kreme bits put it in a museum it's art it's <laughs> literal art it's literally art when Billy confesses that he knows where it is and he goes Krispy Kreme Krispy Kreme Krispy Kreme Krispy they say it like seven times in a row and then Rudy goes is this a special place like he, come on <laughs> he literally comes back to like I am this is so silly the first words from dying and coming back to life are Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme. These are the words that he's uttering when he is brought back to life. This is the most unnuanced product placement. 
and I can't handle it. I think all of their money came from Krispy Kreme. It had to have. Like, had there's have. no way. There's no way. There really isn't because. Um, How? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like that. It's it was beautiful. Just like. Anytime they, I was like, wait, really? We're talking about, like, first we saw the store, right? And I was like, okay, Krispy Kreme, I get it. And then, like, it is a fucking pivotal point of the movie. It's it a major where, plot point. It is literally the site where, like, the life crystal is that, like, gives life. Uh, Krispy Kreme gives life to the entire planet. Yes. Like, I cannot. And then before demolishing it, Rita goes in and has this, like, just incredible experience grabbing a donut and eating it while it's just being the building is collapsing destroyed. around her and she's just like oh my mm, god this donut's worth it like, and like take- this whole movie they're trying to be like they're trying to be so angsty it is so bad and it is so unnuanced uh, like everything about this movie is unnuanced and i have so much to say about it but like and it's trying to be like the dark edgy thing and then we have like this which is a total tonal shift which to me, I was like, make the whole movie in this tone. Yes. Do this. This is what I want. This is what I need. And because clearly this is the best part about this movie. It is self-aware. It knows what it is and it knows what it's doing. How did you miss the mark on literally everything else? You know what I'm convinced, though? I'm convinced that this movie was that and then something got lost in translation because there are and I've. I was so tuned into this. There are moments of that self-awareness. Like the scene with the, uh, what's her name in the bathroom where her friends are like, we're actually here to cut you out of our lives. Snip, snip. Like that's camp. That's so funny. And then Do you she, think and that then, it's the soundtrack that ruined it? Because like, I feel like if there was a different like, uh, hey, bam, bam. D- if it was d- silly. because d- 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 that's cutting so, you out. Bah, bah, bah. The performance like, I feel of like it that is so silly. So different. And the fact that it goes directly from this moment of like friend familiar sabotage to then suddenly like, I'm going to cut my hair. Not even a moment passes. She walks in I and mean, everyone's sorry, like, I'm going to cut myself. No, I'm going to cut my hair. Yes, exactly. The misdirect of that. I was like, this is a lot and it's too much and it's wild. This is camp. It's fake. It's bad, but fun. And we know this. And then she walks into the room. And they're like, nice haircut, hottie. Wow. So hot. Whistle, whistle. Like in such a grotesque and overt way where I'm like, this is a John Waters movie. That's all this is. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm watching right now is a fucking John Waters movie. And then later she gets a text from her friends and the text message is thinking of you poop emoji. That's so funny. Jesus. That is so funny. Like thinking of you poop emoji. That's, okay, I feel is that like... Not hila- that's hilarious. I can't <laughs> believe how funny that is. And that's why I think like the Krispy Kreme tied to like some of these other really silly bits. I'm like... Was it secretly good? This might have secretly been good. (laughs) I hear what you're saying. And I feel like with a different soundtrack and maybe different direction, like I could maybe see that because like then everything else is just so bad and shitty and tries to make these things so fucking heavy. And sure, a lot of it, I do think now that you're like bringing this to light, I think that it is the music and like just the the weird way in which this whole thing is acted because it is acted like not it, it's not like over the top acting like Rita Repulsa herself was this entire time which was like she fucking got it like that that whole thing was great right but they're like and then this and then this but not in like the over the top way where it's like okay cool this is great this is camp it was like just kind of like my mom's dying and so I just leave her because I can't deal yeah. with this. And then I'm gay and I don't know how to tell my parents. So yeah. I just fucking leave. And then like what the fuck was up with Jason? Like I mean I can't – I don't even know. Like okay. Uh, we we got to pick I'm one to start into- with because all these characters are fucking a lot. I'm going to get into are- Jason right now. Okay, right the fuck it. now. Let's, let's because – Okay, which one's Jason? The, the leader. Yeah. Okay, he the kid from Stranger the Things. He's the fucking yes. worst. He's the fucking worst. He is not a oh, good yeah. guy. And he doesn't even fucking pretend to be one. He is an asshole to literally everyone where he fucks over Billy, doesn't even give it, like, he. Billy's trying to be like, hey, I'm on the spectrum, blah, blah. He's like, fuck you, I don't care. What is that, like, Tybo? 
and he leaves him in a fucking ma mi- in the mine to go do whatever the fuck he wants to do, right? To like creep up on Kimberly while she's swimming in her f- like because of course she has to take off her clothes. Oh yeah, right? we needed that. We definitely needed that. Um, for sure. We absolutely needed that. But then like Kimberly has this moment where she's like saying, "Hey, I think this is all my fault that we can't morph because I haven't told anybody my secret, right?" And her secret is awful and we'll get into it's that. Awful. We'll fucking get into that. So, like her secret is her friend sent her a nude of herself, right? And then she sent it to her boyfriend. Uh the the girl's boyfriend said, "Is this really who you want taking to see like take meeting your mom and stuff like that?" And so absolutely her friends had every fucking right to cut her out and they had every fucking right to do everything that they did and she should feel fucking bad she should feel awful that is fucking trash and the fact that in this movie that is not seen uh, that that is not dealt with that's presented but there's fucking nothing about it and then jason is the one where she finally comes up and says like oh i did this and it's my fault and he's like oh, you know what? It's fine. You did an awful thing, but you're not an awful person. Like, she hasn't fucking apologized. Nothing has fucking happened around this. It's just fine to do that because, you know what? You're a good person deep down. Fuck that. And then Jason never fucking tells anybody what his fucking problem is, but, like, he's projecting, like, everybody else is internalizing, saying, this is my fault, this is my fault, but he's actually not saying or doing anything, and he's just fucking belittling everybody. Um, I have a big fucking problem with all of this it's it's mess it's a mess it's a fucking mess the fact that kimberly and jason are like the leads of this movie basically i feel like they're the two worst fucking people like kimberly yeah. is like i think it's actually a crime like an actual federal crime 100%, what she did it absolutely like, is literally could be arrested and should be arrested but and like, she didn't feel bad until no. her dad, like until her dad the the girl's dad saw the naked picture of his daughter right like Fuck her forever. And then she's telling everybody a lie and she's trying and then she like punched her like but, fuck this. But 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 the way this movie plays it is that she's being bullied. Yes. Like that's the yeah, way this movie exactly. plays it is that look at look at this poor girl who is a victim. We never see her as a villain, and then she doesn't even fucking learn because in the final battle, the girl's car gets wrecked. The girl in question with the nude, right? Her car gets wrecked, and Kimberly goes, That's what you get. Ick fucking excuse me? It's it's also I th- it's intentional, right? Like she she tries to smash them intentionally. I, I, like some, it's like it's collateral. It's it? collateral damage, like rocks falling. I the thought car it, or something. I thought it was. Yeah, attempt- it might be. I straight up thought it was attempted murder. It, fuck, it could be. Uh, knowing her, Jesus Christ. But like, yeah. So the, she's a whole thing. And for 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 Jason, my thing with Jason was that he's the leader because Zordon tells him he's the leader. But literally zero percent of his actions represent that, and nothing he does is to earn that like for no reason Zordon's just like you were born for this there can only be one red ranger you're the leader uh at one point jason says i don't want to speak for everybody else and Zordon says no you speak for all of them fucking why what has jason done and the they tried to like establish that in the beginning when he get he i don't even know why the fuck he had a fucking cow in the uh, senior prank bro he literally is doing the stupidest prank and then rolls his car because he's an idiot running away from the cops at this point, right? And he goes to detention and immediately is like, without even like surveying the room, without even knowing what's what, he's just like, cool, I'm here. This is my place now. And we see him bully the bully that's bullying Billy. Mm -hmm. And It's a fun sentence. He's like, I know. And he's like, oh, detention is fun, blah, blah, blah. Get the, like, you know, like, I'm standing up for him. So we're supposed to see him as the good guy because he's standing up for somebody being bullied, right? But then immediately after that, Billy's trying to be like, hey, let's hang out. Hey, let's do this. And he's like, no, fuck you. And he's like, oh, well, you can take my car. Oh, well, okay, fine. You can help me take off this ankle bracelet because I fucked up and I, like, I probably killed somebody in that, like, accident that I had in all of this. No, he gets off. So, like, literally these horrible things that all of these teenagers are doing and have done and the harm that they've caused to other people and the lives that they've destroyed, they never have to reckon with that. Oh, and no. they never have like a moment where um, where the weight of that is like is felt. It's just like immediately as soon as he gets the ankle bracelet, it's fucking off and that never comes to play again. His oh, dad doesn't even fucking like yeah. ask where he's been or anything. Like none of this makes sense. 
Well, they're arguably rewarded. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because then they they're, get the... they're literally given the powers. And that's my biggest thing is like, at least if you're going to do this, like the outcasts become the Power Rangers, like it's an outcast story, at least make it more of a breakfast club type scenario of misunderstood or like people just don't get it. I'm whatever. Not like the actual bullies and the actual assholes of school are being punished for good reason. And suddenly they're like, we are the ones who are what it's like, no, you're not the ones you are the ones causing the harm. Now they're the power Rangers. And now we have to, it's like everything you said, Jess, they're rewarded for their bad behavior. And it's awful because even Zordon too himself is also a piece of fucking shit. Yeah. He's a liar. And Alpha too, like Alpha's like just uh, along for the ride and also, and perpetuating this too because he's like oh here i'm putting all the pieces in place for you zordon i did all of this for you like and i'm just like this is really bad and really awful like there's so much that zordon does to like i mean the kids like the teenagers are fucked and assholes and everything but then zordon like perpetuates that abuse and like puts them through all this shit like without their consent like when they like show throws them in with rita or even like with the medallions and stuff like that i mean like I can't with this like and there's like so many times where like the reason that we even see like the suits start to manifest the Power Ranger power start to manifest is because Billy and Zack are in a fight right and or, I'm sorry Jason, uh, and Jason and Zach are in a fight and Billy comes up and is like no right which Billy is the best part about this movie and I fucking hate how his characterization works and how it breaks all the time because like they try to establish him as being on the spectrum or like not understanding humor and not understanding sarcasm and that sort of thing right and there are certain things that like he was doing where like you know lining up the pencils and and all of this and I'm like hey I understand this OCD hi I can relate to some of the things and the processes that he that they tried to establish and that you know they were trying to show and then immediately to they just literally break it all the time whenever it's convenient and whenever it like it's going to be cool for him to say this thing or if it's going to be convenient for him to go off and do this like his character could have been so fucking cool and even though he's the reason that they have the medallions, he's the reason that that they find the um the, the spaceship. Cream. He's the, the reason for literally everything that happens in this. Like, he's still shit on by every. He fucking dies. He should be. Yeah, he should be the main yeah. character of this movie. Like, he's he's the main character of this movie because it's his idea to go find the medallions. Like you said, he tracks down the Krispy Kreme. He's the one that dies. He's the one that like. He's the first one to morph, right? The one that obviously cares mm-hmm. the most. Like, he gives the most shit. Like, when they think they're dying, when they're falling in the pit, he tells them, thank you for being my friends. Like, yeah. that's the shit a leader does. That's the shit that makes Billy, like, kind of the main character of this movie, whereas Jason does none of that. Like, it all it all kind of wraps up, like, it's... All the characters, I have so many notes about all the characters, but, like, the, the overall takeaway, my biggest takeaway from this movie was, it kind of hit me halfway through, where Jason has this line where he says, we're all screw-ups. And this movie is way out in left field, whatever you want to say, about its definition of, like, outcasts and screw-ups. Like, like Eric, you said Breakfast Club, right? Yes. I I basically, I I imagine this was pitched as, what if the Breakfast Club became superheroes, basically? So Literally, that's the vibe. But they don't know how to tell that story. Exactly. They literally meet in detention. So what they they end up doing is, like, oh, we want to make sure, we want to make sure these people all are, like, screw-ups, right? The people you wouldn't expect to be heroes who are going to go on this hero's journey and learn to be good and then rise up, right? So... Jason and Kimberly are outcasts because they're assholes who did bad things, who deserve the bad things that happened to them. Zach is kind of in the middle, but then like Billy and Trini are outcasts because of their identity. That's not and a screw my, up. That's you're not my you didn't somebody you're not somebody who did, who did a, a big whoopsie uh oh. That's your identity and that cannot be changed. Like well yeah, to that's conflate, so wild to me to, to conflate badness as clearly as it does tying that to autism or autism as badness mm-hmm. so clearly or sexuality. So like, we're all we yeah and sexuality like we're all these bad people and it's autism and and sexuality that these two are now like in the bad group. It's like yeah. wait, explain to me why those two things are bad like, jason and kimberly committed crimes actual yes. legit crimes yes and they're grouped in with billy and trini because billy and trini are different bigger quotes and they're, yes. and jason and kimberly are not sorry about it and they don't At feel all. like they did anything wrong no they never uh, apologize or feel remorseful there's there's one scene when when billy is dead when uh jason's like 
barely sort of apologizes. He's like, I'm sorry I pushed you guys. I was acting out of anger. I see that now. Like, okay, cool. 0.5% of personal growth. You're almost there. Keep going. And by almost, I mean not at all close, but keep going. Yeah. And then he just doesn't. Mm-hmm. Ugh, this movie. Like, It's bad. It's really bad. I wanted and... to like it so much. Yeah. I was, when I first saw it in theaters, I wanted to like it so badly because I was stoked on it. And I saw it, and I kind of, like you said, to kind of turn your brain off. And I was like, yeah, that was cool. And then the big tease at the end with, oh, maybe they'll do Tommy for part two, right? I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, give me part two. Can't wait. But watching it today, like, this movie sucks. It's really rough. This movie sucks so bad. Not not even give, like, one one of the biggest issues that I had also was just, like, story-wise, when they get into the car accident, what, like, that just seems like a really bad, okay, what happened? How did they get, like, I know it's, like, a mystery, but then secondarily, that's, his mom's car or his family's car. Right. But that's never touched on again. Like you took the car. Where is it now? We also get everybody's like backs or like their, what happened story. Right. And with Jason, we don't get any explanation for his like stupid prank that he pulled. We get like, Oh, his dad really wants him to uh, be a football player, a football star or whatever. Like, but he was a football player. Like you were already doing it. It's he was like he... already doing it. Yeah. yeah. And then his dad is rightfully pissed at him yeah. because he literally threw his career away. And if he didn't want to do it, he didn't have to. But then we see him just like longingly staring at the football stuff. That and seems all of so this. weird. Yeah. Like that the all the all their their, you know, business, whatever, their backstory comes out at that campfire scene, right? Which is mm-hmm. uh, still not Jason's idea. That would be a good team building exercise and for Jason a leader. And Jason and Kimberly no, do idea. not share. Exactly. Uh, when they when they go to Kimberly, she says, "Not today. Skip me." And when they go to Jason, he, you know what he says? Everyone already knows who I am. Mm-hmm. Get fucked, dude. Like, yeah. come on. Like with especially with with Zach and like uh, and <sighs> Trini expressing these secrets that they've never told anybody. Like really, like really showing their souls. There, they're just like, "Oh no, you know who I am." It's a. It's. It's an inarguably bad movie. There's how how I was just gonna say how do we feel about Rita? I want to get into Rita a little bit. Let's how please do we get feel? into Rita. Just okay. Because, I love because that she's, she's yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say she is a monumentally big part of the story, being the main villain, but also like a reinterpretation of one of the most iconic villains. I think in most like we love Rita Repulsa. I generally, I'm saying a big we generally. Yes, Rita Repulsa, stand um, cool. I like that they made her the Green Ranger. I think that was kind of a cool yeah. twist. Um, so cool. Especially because, like, we, like, when you think about, like, the lore of what this was trying to set up, like, the bones of this, I'm like, oh, cool. Like, Zordon was a Power Ranger, tight. Like, like when you look at, like, the bullet points on paper, it's like, oh, and then Rita was the Green Ranger and went crazy with power and was like, no. Like, cool, I'm on board. Let's fucking do this. Let's go. But, like, the execution of all of it just didn't make sense. And I feel like a lot of the stuff that I really loved about Rita from the original, and I'm sure, like, some of it's nostalgia. Or, or, but, I mean, no, fuck that. We just watched the first movie, and I was <laughs> like, fucking love Rita. Um, they took a lot of that away, where it's like she was just kind of grotesque or, like, supposed to be grotesque with, like, you know, markings on her face and, like, some weird, like, body structure because she's an alien or whatever, right? Like, yeah. so she's supposed to be actually a little bit repulsive but like not in the in like this weird different way which was like okay but like she's not charming and i need her to be like that bad bitch charming like always has like the fucking wittiest comeback and is like ready to like knock fools together and stuff like that this one was just like i'm an alien and i'm dangerous i'm an alien and i'm a monster and you're yeah. like okay like i don't rita repulse is sassy and she's kind of silly, and that's the point. But now she's like, I'm going to eat the gold. And you're like, what are you doing? I felt like she was underdeveloped. And trying to, like crazy, right? Like trying yeah. to be portrayed as that where she's like, yeah. Goldar, 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 she's like, ha, ha, Goldar. Yeah. And you're like, what? And then she was like, she was trying to like fuck over Trini, who like because she saw her as the weakest one, right? Where she's like, I was an outsider like you. And you're like, wait, I'm sorry. I'm an outsider because I'm, you know, because I'm gay. Like, that's that's her yeah. whole thing. Also, then is Rita gay? Queer canon. Uh, maybe. I mean, true. Which would be kind of iconic and would make a lot of sense. I would have loved more about, like, 
her as the Green Ranger, like some more backstory about that. I would have rather watched that movie than literally 90 minutes before they morph. It's the hour 30 mark when they morph for the first time, by the way. I, yep. I clocked it. Yeah. Instead of 90 minutes of teen angst just repeating itself over and over again, give me some yeah. more shit with Rita. She's barely in the movie. And to be fair, that whole opening scene where it's like, they're aliens, it's the dawn of the dinosaurs, we're getting that backstory. I'm like, this is silly, but this is exactly what I it's want. It's good world building. Exactly. I was like, fucking here for this. And then like Literally, five cool minutes world- later, yes. I was like, oh God. And then none of that really even matters. Like Zordon's barely in the movie and then Rita's barely in the movie. So it's like, what did we? Exactly. What are we doing here? And but, suddenly we just have these shitty kids who are being shitty and yeah. then they're like, let's be shitty more. And, and then it's like, yeah. <laughs> Zordon is just such an asshole. I was just like, I don't, why is he even here? And like also terrifying. Like I really hated like the way that they redid his like, character where like he's on like the wall i was like this is terrifying it I was don't uneasy zordon yeah. to be terrifying like yeah i don't like this i don't like zordon being a bad because zordon <sighs> to me felt like a bad guy and that didn't feel correct um and we're supposed to be like oh he's he's good because he gave billy back his life how does that even work but i mean like okay Doesn't i'm not matter. even <laughs> i'm not he's, even gonna gonna go there yeah, but it's he, Zordon being a bad guy was not was not working for me. That whole characterization didn't work. Rita did not work for me in the way that they were trying to like literally this is exactly when somebody does a remake and they try to make everything angry and gritty and dark and it's like how do you do that you give everybody trauma okay but like then if okay, you're Chris going Nolan. to do that look at the kind of trauma that you're trying to give people right like what is your trauma this person like literally sent somebody nude photos like without consent like and you- like this per- like that is her trauma and she's internalizing this and then like zordon's thing is that he died and he wants to be the red ranger again like yeah that ter- that didn't fucking work i mean i will fully say it feels like the person who made this film was a big michael bay fanboy and then did michael bay poorly which is rough it's hard to do right? it's already like, not great it's already not great secondly I just keep, I really just keep wanting to go back to this. Yes, Rita Repulsa, I was not sold by the performance. I thought the Yum Yum Gold, uh, I'm a big monster and I'm kind of wild, was not working for me. But the Yum Yum Krispy Kreme <laughs> was so, like, it's it's her, like, I don't know. I just keep thinking about how funny it is. Like, it's her looking at, <laughs> it, like, the way she was, like, looking at the gold and wanting to pull the teeth out of the heads of the people with the gold teeth. She's looking at a donut the same way. In a way that's trying to sell us a fucking donut. That's so funny. And you know what? That's so fucking funny. I would fucking kill for a donut right now, though. I would kill for a donut, so, too. Chris Chris Check that box. You did Krispy it, Power Cream, Rangers. Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme. I want to go to Krispy Kreme so fucking bad right now. I would love a Krispy Kreme donut box <laughs> One from Krispy Kreme, please. But uh, I just, one dozen for me. Thank one, you. Yeah. A dozen. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. A dozen what? Uh, Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme? Oh, Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. I miss her, so it's Krispy Kreme donuts. I believe it's Krispy Kreme. Um, I am obsessed. I I'm I'm like not even trying to like do a bit. I'm actually kind of blown away. Your face is very sincere right now. Unrelentingly earnest those moments were in the way that they're trying to embed themselves in the movie. So much so that it does feel like a fun stunt, and it's funny. It's so funny. It's the funniest fucking thing. <laughs> it's so iconic. I'm literally never going to for and you know what maybe the marketing worked because to me <laughs> I'm I'm like talking so much about this because of how silly and yeah. bad it was. And even before rewatching this, I just remember that this was the Krispy Kreme movie. <laughs> like literally Krispy I remember Krispy Kreme presents <laughs> Krispy Kreme presents Power Rangers and it was the biggest thing. I like even after watching it talking with friends I'd be like, "Oh yeah, the overblown Krispy Kreme commercial." Like that's all that that movie was to me. It was the perfect placement for that in this fucking tiresome movie. It was a literal let's all go to the lobby but go <laughs> to go get Krispy Kreme. Let's all go to Krispy Kreme to get ourselves a that, treat. It really did feel like a breath of fresh air. And I'm like, is my brain now tying a breath of fresh air to Krispy Kreme? And suddenly in three weeks, I'll be like, mm, I need something refreshing. Krispy Kreme. Possibly. Possibly. But what a fucking bad movie. What a just what a just overtly unnuanced garbage can trash. And then when she like she gold morphs into the other mech and you're like, 
okay, like I get that Ivan Ooze did it, and but that made sense kind of. In this one, it doesn't really. I don't know. I the whole time because she's like, <sighs> I need gold. I just had like Austin Powers, Austin Powers stuck yep, in my yep, head. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> same, same, same. I need gold. Same. I love gold. Yeah. I could not. Yeah, you I was, did much I wasn't Sorry, even going to bring it up. Cracked. I wasn't even going to bring it up because I know I'm the ha ha Austin Powers joke boy. I'm I wasn't sorry, gonna what's bring your it up. website that you own? It's not important. Um, <laughs> Austin Powers that website, but um, yeah, I, I, it was. They did a lot of things in this movie that were like, kind of on brand for the franchise, like the Zeo crystal that's from the show. Like mm-hmm. the backstory of Rita and and Zordon was cool as hell. Like, uh, just little things here, like oh, cool. Like so, so you watch the show, so you're fans of the show. I, I think maybe I, I gotta be my guess. But then you just took it and tried to do the Chris Nolan treatment and like, it's so gritty. Where are they? Where's Rachel? Like, ah, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. And then on top of all that, we get Elizabeth Banks chewing scenery and then fucking Bill Hader showing up as a robot who makes racist jokes. Like, yep. I love Bill Hader, but what is happening with Alpha? It's, it's a bad, it's like a bad story. It's such a bad story with bad characters. Like, but not in a fun way like the first one. The first one's a bad story with bad characters. Oh, it's a bad but movie, it's, yeah. But it's fun. Yeah. And it knows what it is, whereas this movie is, like you said, trying to... It's going through the nullification of cinema <laughs> and trying to real-world heighten or real-world stakes all of these literally bombastic live-action cartoons. I feel like... So the original Power Rangers, the world is great, and everything in the world is you know, wonderful and for everyone. And it's E for everyone, right? Everything is perfect. And in this one, it was the complete opposite, right? So like if this um, like tonally and like if the world that it was set in was a little bit more utopic, I could see, you know, all of them just hanging out in the space. There's a whole fucking big ass spaceship. Like explore that shit. Let's see, let's see that. Let's. Why don't you guys go hang out? Give why me some lore. Like, why doesn't on. um Alpha make y'all food? You know, or why don't <laughs> yeah. you like like do something to show some sort of camaraderie? So like not everything like in the world is out to get you and to harm you, and like and everything isn't sharp. You know, everything yeah. isn't like um a threat or a potential threat, right? And I feel like that's that idea just really um, changed everything about the world and everything about Power Rangers and what they are and what they're supposed to be. Like, I cannot picture like Tommy or Jason, you know, the, the leaders of Power Rangers, Billy saying like, hey, I have autism, you know, and, you know, and then being like, fuck you, I don't care. Like, I cannot picture that. And to me, that's, that's not Power Rangers. That's not what that's about. That's not what that's ever been about. So, um, like right from the beginning, I'm like, fuck you. Like, this is, this is not Power Rangers. This is, you can stick any other name on this and then maybe, I mean, it would still be trash, but like. You're not tarnishing not even tarnishing like i mean you clearly like sure like fans of the show like you got the you got the little things right like you paid so much attention to detail on like the name of the crystal or on the name of this but you didn't understand the heart of the show yeah you are literally missing the point of this you are missing the heart of this you are missing what this is all about in every way fundamentally yeah fuck this movie Fuck this movie. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Uh, bam, 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 bam. We made back it. Back from Angel City. We I'm sorry, it. Angel Grove, whatever. Yeah, Angel Grove. Eric. Yes. The first movie, 1995, Mighty Morphin, Power Rangers, colon, the movie. Who was it for? It was for hashtag only 90s kids and the BK crew. <laughs> that's their name right from burger king oh yeah yeah so bk crew exclusively just those fake characters and hashtag only 90s kids will get it danny who do you think this is <laughs> i mean the, the obvious answer is is me my, yeah. myself um but to make it a little more i guess global kids who you know wore faded jean shorts and the high socks and the white tennis shoes and, and went to school with the Power Rangers t-shirts in third grade and 
had the Power Rangers lunch pail. Power Ranger kids, you know? Are you just describing me now? That's also me. That's what I'm saying. That was me, but <laughs> okay. that's also, like, all, all, all of us that were, like, enamored with this, which uh, my brother always hated it because it was, he was mad that it was a Voltron ripoff. That he's oh, older and watch okay. But I'm like, yeah. no, this is, but that, that's, you're old and that's for you. This is for me. This is my show. Like, Power Rangers was the first show that was my show, I feel like. Other than, like, Sesame Street, I guess, but, like, when I was a baby. But this was mine. Like, it wasn't my brother and sister show. It was mine. So, therefore, it was for me and kids like me and people like mm. you, I guess. Who do you think it was for? <laughs> well, I know that it was for me. But I also, in my head canon, I think that this was supposed to bring down the big slime industry. Mm, big slime. So, um, I mean, and possibly even Nickelodeon, because who's associated with slime, especially in the 90s? It was the Nickelodeon. War on, the war right? on GAC, please. The war on GAC. The war on GAC. GAC, slime, all of it. So um, <laughs> I'm going to say Nasty. that that's who this was for this was for them because it was supposed to destroy them and associate slime and all of that with badness and um the power rangers would not be cool with that so that's my answer take that nickelodeon (laughs) take Uh, that (laughs) eric did you like it i did um i thought it was cute and fun and i mean is it arguably a bad movie sure but uh, I did. I did enjoy myself while watching it. So, yes, I did like it. Danny B. Yeah. S- same, similar answer. Like, it's not a good movie at all. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if it's if it's on, if it's, I don't know what channel it would be on. But, like, if it just comes on one day, I probably wouldn't change the channel. I wouldn't pay attention to it. I'd be doing other things. But, yeah, I wouldn't mind having it on. I... I fucking had the best time watching this movie. I <laughs> love this movie. Oh my god. It was incredible to revisit. I need more Rita Repulsa, this Rita Repulsa in my life. I had the greatest time. I fucking love this movie. Was it messy with the appropriation? Yes. But that's not why I liked it. I liked it for um <laughs> all the reasons that we talked about, the horrible CG, the like fucking extreme sports like i immediately upon watching this i was like oh my god i know exactly why i loved this oh my god like it was an incredible um walk back to a uh, five-year-old little jess so yeah. it's a time capsule this movie is encased in it, amber it really which is. They, they even make a jurassic park joke at one point which is you know lets you know what when it came out yeah, That's with the true. dinosaurs, it's very yeah. like, oh my god, just like Jurassic Park. I mean, a- a- Adam, Adam, the Black Ranger, even flat out says the line, "Welcome to Jurassic Park." Like, yes, cool, cool man, <laughs> cool line, <laughs> really doing it. Okay, so now we've moved on to Power Rangers 2017, or is it Saban? I think it's Saban's Power Rangers. I think it's Saban presents Power, it's Saban's Power Rangers. Power Rangers uh, colon the Krispy Kreme experience. Yes. Yes. Um, Eric. Was this new, interesting, or the same, or progressive, regressive? Get in there. I thought that it was both new and interesting, um, n- neither of which I thought was good, but I thought it was new and interesting. Um, I thought it was, I think, just generally regressive. I think most of it was bad. I think the storytelling was worse. I think the... They just missed the mark on all accounts. I think it was new and interesting, but entirely regressive, all around not good. What about you, Danny? New for sure, because this is hashtag not my Power Rangers. So definitely new. Um, Not very interesting for me. Uh, It's just the most cookie cutter, how do we make teen angst? Like, should we put thought into it? No, just kind of teen angst stereotypes. Like, whatever, I'm bored. Um also, it's very long before even anything happens, so also bored. Much like Ivan Ooze, I'm bored. Um, <laughs> but also regressive, I would say, like, which is wild because, you know, 95 versus 2017, you would think there would be some some progress or something. But, like, in the original, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's camp, and it's very much, like, G-rated or PG at worst. So they don't really get into, like, a lot of if it's not part of the story they don't get into it right they don't need to make other comments but like in that movie yeah. like like Jess when you said like you can't picture Tommy or Jason making rude comments to like Billy right like in the 95 version 
that little shitty kid who's their stand like runs up to him all the time and Tommy's always like hey sport hey slugger how's it going believe in your dreams you can do anything like power ranger in training yeah like, awesome yeah they're being nice to people in this movie no one's nice like and they make racist <laughs> jokes they they have jokes in there just for the sake of like ah oh he's the black ranger but he's not black get it like oh boy and then yeah. my the final mark i will say about being regressive the armor in this movie their power ranger armor the girl armor has boobs Ooh, titty city yep whereas in the original they don't so mm-hmm. good good for 95 actually and bad yeah. for 17 so regressive in most pretty much every way yeah um i'm pretty surprised with that too um honestly um now all i can picture like what i want with this movie is i want um an ivan ooze mystery science theater 3000 version where he is just ripping watching it (laughs) ripping on it the whole time i think that that would be very fun um that would be really cool i do think it's new um it's uninteresting in the all the ways that they tried to make this movie interesting like they yeah. really did try to be like oh and we're gonna do this and oh man isn't this gonna be so cool and it really fell flat because it was um it felt like because it was just so unnuanced it was just like uh data points like oh fuck yeah this will be cool oh man wouldn't this be rad like oh here we're so topical there's a gay person in there like oh my god Look how hashtag and- woke we are And, like, literally the only thing that we know about her character is that she's gay. Like, we don't get anything else Yeah, it doesn't matter to the story at all. Yeah, and, like, that's – it just really, really bothered me. Um, So, yeah, I think it is incredibly regressive for all of those ways. All the ways that both of you already mentioned. I mean, um, it still really fucking bothers me about Kimberly. Um, My Kimberly would never do that. And, like, not to say, like, you know, like – I'm I'm all for reimagining of things, but when you are going to make the supposed heroes of this universe, and especially taking something that it meant so much to so many people, and like, you know, um, really, honestly, in the absence of my parents, helped me um, like shape my moral compass in a lot of ways, right? Like, you're gonna do that, and you're going to make these people literal fucking like at at least like the the two main characters literal fucking criminals and then everybody else is just an outcast because they are mentally uh have a mental disability or um because they're not queer yeah or are asian you know like or like or you know you're not white like these are your problems and um for zach it's because he's poor so economic shit too like Yeah, and economics too, and having to deal with like death, like, and literally, like, he's watching his mom die while fucking Jason and Kimberly are like living their rich ass white lives that are just like, oh my god, my friends are so mad at me. Oh my god, I fucked up so bad. Like, go, like, cool. This is this is about you. Yeah, um, absolutely (laughs) regressive in like literally every way in ways that I didn't even think it was possible for the Power Rangers to be regressive. Yeah. I'm getting mad about it They really did what we didn't think they could do. I'm getting mad about it again, just thinking about it now. (laughs) (laughs) Eric, who was it for? Krispy Kreme Donuts. (laughs) That's going to be all of our answers, right? (laughs) Only just for for fucking the Krispy Kreme company. That's the only reason this movie is made. Danny. So... The secret answer is, of course, Krispy Kreme. That's what that, that's what they know in their hearts at the studio. What they tried to project was like, this is for, it's for who studios think millennials are. Yeah. Like, oh, we know millennials want to see more representation, so don't worry. We'll put the we'll we'll make the person of color autistic, and we'll make the other one gay. We check all the boxes, right? We're woke now, right, guys? Like, this is what you want. And also, angst because the world's hard. Meh, 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 meh. Like, <laughs> look at come come see yourself in this movie. Isn't it cool? But secretly also by Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Uh, you know how in Josie and the Pussycats, like, underneath the music, like, yeah. there's like, buy this. You Go to Circuit like, City. And it's like yeah. Mr. Movie Phone under yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like he is, like, underneath all of the sound for this. And buy Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> Except he's not even underneath. It's just in the movie. It's just he's on it, screen saying it. And at it, one like... point, it's just literally... <laughs> In the movie, like it, it's oh like God. so silent when they first start, and then like they just like keep ramping it up until literally, like you know, it crescendos, and it's just we are here at Krispy Kreme finally. Um, 
That's who it was for. It was for Krispy Kreme. It totally 100%. was. One hundred percent. Like I don't even have like a smart response because like <laughs> it's just they tried to make it for Power Rangers fans and be like, oh look, like I we know that you're older now, so this is the story for you. This is the more nuanced version. And in trying to do a more nuanced version, they just made a trash can and set it on fire, and we're like, oh my they god, they really it's did. Art. Eric, did you like this movie? No, actively and actually, no, I did not. It's bad. It's terrible. It's awful. <laughs> Trash can. There you go. There it is. And Boop. Danny V? Uh, yeah, I'd love a donut. I mean, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a bad movie for bad people, and uh, I wanted to like it, and I was uh, very let down. No, I don't like it. Never. I'm never yeah. going to watch it again. I don't care. Y'all, this movie is fucking bad, and I'm so glad that they never did a sequel, <laughs> and I Same. fucking hate this movie. I'm glad I never watched it before this, and um, we deserve better, Power Rangers fans. From, we we absolutely deserve better. Don't let the studio trick you into thinking that this is what you want, because this is trash. It's trash. Got him. All right. Well, uh, we did it. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, thank you, Danny, for coming on. Is there anything that you want to promote? Well, I host a podcast called Quest Friends Forever with my friends Jessica Tercero, Eric Lefebri, and David Tercero, who is the only one not here at the moment. He's in the other room, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, we play Dungeons and Dragons, and it's fun. And I sort of write, I try to write kind of a serious story, but also it's kind of stupid and funny. And then I have dumb characters and these three, the two of them here and the other one make it also very funny when they completely go off the rails and ruin what I'm trying to do and make fun of my cool, cool, good characters. Which is every episode. It's mostly every episode. In the last episode, Eric shot a a fireball out of his nipples to give you a small taste. Um, Honestly, the best way to do it. The only way to do it. It was fantastic. So that's what we do. My husband plays a robot in Dungeons and Dragons that like can only say like 12 things or something and they're all pre-programmed it's very fun it's a lot of fun and i uh i work very hard on it even though it doesn't seem like it on the pod it takes me a very long time to put together and write so uh please oh, give me you... attention and validation everyone it doesn't look it. like you work hard on it what are you talking about well it's just you me DM, talking you dm the whole show you edit the whole show you add all of the audio but, track you but on pod you it's also like... have to write all of the all of the story and everything. Yeah, I, mean, I know. Like, it's, I'm aware. It's a lot. But on pod, you... it's just me doing a, a voice of a, a, a southern accent guy who you all hate. So, <laughs> I mean, we do but hate we, him. We finale. love to hate. Of course, it's, of course. It's the one we love to hate. Justice for Cadillac Margarita. Do you want to give all. our listeners like a taste of of your accents they can expect? I uh, mean, yeah. Who do you who do you want? Who, who's who's your number oh one? God. Who do you want? I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, Dram they're all bad. Fresher so, for me. Oh, we can't do Tran Fresher anymore. <laughs> I think we that's a moratorium on that. We can't do it. Sorry, sweetie. <laughs> nope, it's bad. It's bad. I regret it Pretty immediately. Good. Pretty good. That's Spot it. on. But yeah, let's do our pod for more of that kind of stuff. You'll love it. Awesome. I guarantee it. <laughs> well, thanks again. Um, and thank you, listeners. Don't forget to rate and review us on social media. Our artwork and music is by Eric Lefebri. Editing is by Danny Barkley. Hey, that's hey. me. And thank you again, uh, Eric. And Danny. thank you, Jess. Thank, thank you, you Danny. Jess. Thank you, Eric. Yeah. And remember, stay cute. And stay critical. Bye. Goodbye. 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 This podcast has been brought to you by the Nostalgia Network. Visit the NostalgiaNetwork.com for more. Hey everybody, I'm Eric. I'm Shelby. I'm Jake. And we are the band Lousy Advice from the Lousy Advice Podcast. Come listen as we draft artists and genre-centric best of lists. With the help of our closest friends. These lists are canon. And there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. From Misfits to Cher. Green Day to Gaga. Or Pup to Paramore. Listen to the Lousy Advice Podcast now or else. Stream us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Nostalgia Network, or wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget that we are the band Lousy Advice, and this is our podcast, the Lousy Advice Podcast. The Lousy Advice Podcast? The Lousy Advice Podcast. Podcast. Podcast.